listening to Kelly Everts, um, who strips for God. What mm. goes? Let's go back. Now you, I read that you quit, you quit dancing, because you were a dancer. Mm -hmm. And then you went back to it and started stripping again after you got religion. We'll, we'll say after you got religion. Yes, I did quit for two and a half years, and I took a job as a social uh, worker, sort of like a social worker, community organizer, to help the young people in my neighborhood. I live in a very poor neighborhood in Brooklyn, Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and a lot of underprivileged people there on welfare. So uh, I wanted, again, like I said, I had this overwhelming need to serve God. It was something that overpowered me, you know, and I had to prove my love to God by works, not just by saying, well, I love God. He gave me his light. I'm saved. No, that's not enough. You've got to save people. You've got to help people. So uh, I opened up my apartment, and I gave out flyers in the neighborhood, come to my apartment for services on Sunday. Nobody came, so I went out in the street, and I started picking up people off the streets. And I, I picked up people that looked like they needed help, and most of them were gangs, teenage gangs, hanging around the neighborhood. Little by little, I started bringing them into my apartment. So you can imagine the enormous problems that came out of it, but... Uh, and then shortly thereafter, I got the job with the government. So by day, I was the government worker, and you I... You got a I, job with the government yes, doing what? A community organizer. Community organizer. And then at night and on the weekend, I did my religious work. I combined the two, so I was working day and night for two and a half years. I spent my own money that I made. I lived in poverty, but I had enough for myself, you know, and, and, and whatever I needed to do. I don't need a lot of money. And uh, everything was, was done. You know, I think a lot of people have a very negative idea of strip tease places and lounges that, uh, now, now, you know, I think that's why we all look at you and think, oh, come on, you know. Um, is that the only place you could do this, though, that you could spread this word of God? Apparently, God has wanted me because uh, we say we go where priests and nuns fear to tread. You know, Jesus came to save the sinners, and the, the good people are, most of the good people are already going to church. They have a religious life. What about the people who don't have God yet? We've got to meet them in their own territory. We've got to go out and find the lost sheep. Who is going out to find the lost sheep? Who is going into these pornography places, striptease places, nightclubs, where lonely people go who cannot find anything, who are alienated? They need someone to come out and reach them. We are the outreach people. Just like I reach the poor kids in the street, I reach the poor men and the poor girls who are alcoholics, drug addicts, and uh, who are, many of them are prostitutes. And not, all, not that prostitution of itself is the worst thing in the world, but the demoralizing state that they are in, demoralized. A lot of strip teasers are prostitutes. Yeah, completely demoralized. And these girls are committing suicide right and left. Now, who is reaching them? Who is going out there? Are there any ministers going out there? A few. A few. You're one. You say you're one. I personally <laughs> know one priest, Father Paul, and uh, he's known as a priest of prostitutes, and he does go around to the places, but there are very few. What goes through your mind when you're stripping? Well, just like uh, any other time, there could be a variety of things, but I try to keep my mind on my work and my, my, my music. You've got to think about your music because it is an art, and you've got to concentrate on your art. Do you take everything off? Where it's legal, yeah. Where it's legal. It's mm -hmm. not legal in Michigan. It is. Oh, it's You have not. to wear a G-string in Michigan. You don't in New York, right? Uh, I, I don't remember working in Michigan. I have an offer for a job in Detroit right now. Where? In Detroit? Yeah, I've, I don't know the name of the place. My agent told me about it. Okay. You had a question? Yes, I'd like to know. I'd like to know if you take up a collection when you strip. I never have. I've thought about it, but I, I didn't have the guts. <laughs> and I'd like to They're know They're mad too. enough at me already for just preaching. If they're asking for money, they might throw me out bodily. <laughs> I'd like to know, too, you know, why it is that you feel you have to strip. I strip because it has been a, uh, when I first started, my teacher suggested it, Verna Talbot. She said that God wanted me to use my body to make money for the church. So when I first went on the road in 72, I gave money for the church for six years for her church, One World Light. And uh, then little by little, I got involved 
and, and I was back in the business. I didn't even want to be in the business. I wanted to be a contemplative and a mystic, which is my natural leaning, my gift. But I was kind of forced into the active life by my teacher. Couldn't you make money dancing, but without stripping, you know, getting nude? You see, I don't think it's immoral. You see, you're saying this because you think it's immoral and you think that it's a bad thing to show the body, but I don't. If it were immoral, I wouldn't do it. If it were a sin, I wouldn't do it. I don't consider it a sin. I don't think it's bad for a person to show their body because bodies are beautiful, but, you know, to show your body and say that you're doing it for the Lord, I don't understand it. Okay. We've got a telephone call we're going to take right now, okay? Um, hello? Hello, you're on Kelly and Company. Yes, um, I was just curious. How can someone sit on stage dressed like the happy hooker and preach God? I was brought from a I family. I can't hear her. I can't hear her. Would you want to repeat that, please? Sure. I was, like I said, I was wondering, how can you sit there on stage dressed like the happy hooker and preach God? I was brought up on regular Baptist, and that is very simple. I can't hear all of it either, so, but she said, how can you sit there on stage? And look like a hooker? Right. Dress like the happy hooker. I heard Dress that. Dress like the happy hooker. What was hooker? the other part? Well, see, I was brought up on regular Baptist, and in our book, that is very simple. She was brought up in the Baptist church. Okay, well. Well, yeah. I don't think that a person's clothing necessarily uh, should cast aspirations on their character. I don't think you should judge a person by their clothing. That's my answer. All right. You do wear seductive clothing, though. I don't consider I'm seductive. Okay. Well, we could debate that. We're going to take another. We're going to take another telephone call. Hello, you're on Kelly and Company. Hello, I'm an ordained minister, and I just want to say that I think what Kelly is doing is perfectly legitimate, and I think she's sincere, and I see nothing wrong with uh, with stripping. And, and uh, the way she gets her audience. Uh, she, I think she does get an audience that would otherwise not be reached. Hallelujah. That's two. We got one for you and one against. <laughs> Who else had a question down in here? You did. You can stand up. Well, I, I just think that one contradicts the other. When During the break when you were up here and you were giving your sermon, you were very believable. But had you been allowed to, to start stripping, I don't think that anybody is going to really be hearing the words that you're saying because you're actually doing something to distract from that. Yes, it is a problem for me to make myself understood to the men, but I have to somehow s overcome that problem. But I have a feeling you make under men understand more than women. This Definitely. I mean, maybe well, the same, the, the same uh, word of God applies to both. The same Holy Spirit applies to both just so happens that in my career I reach men. We have more, more men come to see women than women. Do we have a telephone call? We have another telephone call? Okay, hello. You're on Kelly and Company. Uh, yes, my first question more or less went with the first lady. said she looked like Happy Hooker. But from what she sounds like to me, she sounds like a complete phony. She just said every time you ask her a question, she says, I do it for God, I do it for God, I do it for God. That, if anybody's going to put it against religion, I think she is. She just sounds like a complete phony to me. Phony? Yeah. I mean, it's just uh, like when you made the statement in the morning, uh, the cross, it's in a seductive place. She knew that it was the chain was too long before she got there, so why didn't she fix it? She just, to me, she's just... Send me a shorter chain, Box 325, Brooklyn, New York, 11211. It just, to me, she's just cheap, and she's using God to make what she wants to off of it. What do I make off of it, lady? Well, take a look at yourself. I tell you, if I, I have no thing against stripping, because my husband has taken me places and I've gone. You don't like the way I look. Some people do. I'm sorry. Well, lady, I tell point. you, you look like. If I didn't want to swear at you, you look, you look. Careful. What is it about my looks that you hate so much? Leave it. Well, t if somebody walked into a place and looked at you like that, they probably wouldn't even want to go to church. You're worse than Madeline. What's wrong with the way I look? I don't understand what she's talking you look about. Like What's cheap wrong with the way I look? You look like trash. I look like trash? You sure do, honey. I well, do you do. Come here. Stand I'd up. I'd like to see what you look like. I want to hear I want to hear from a man. Okay. What do you think? Um, it seems to me that it's rather inconsistent to preach the word of God and strip at the same time. I I can see your point that you're trying to reach men that wouldn't ordinarily be reached. However, 
In our culture, as it is today, stripping is not an art form. It is uh, something that appeals to prurient interest. And actually, I think you're cheapening yourself and your message by doing both together. Well, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. The, uh, first of all, the stripping can be an art form. It depends on the individual artist. As far as cheapening the message of God, God can go anywhere. This God is the creator. God can be anywhere, anytime, any place. And God is always the most valuable. God can never be cheap. God is always great and always will be great. And I cannot take away anything from God. God is too great for that. I think what people are trying to say is, uh, do what you're doing, uh, but why do you have to bear your body? I'm You've got a lovely I'm body. I'm not saying that. I'm not jealous of it or anything. You've got a great body. But uh, why do you have to take clothes off and show your body because are you using what God gave you? Are because you using? The, the, this is my most effective means of reaching people, reaching people with my message. It is the most effective means. I have tried other methods. I have tried several other methods and this is the most convenient and in this way I am using my gifts for God. My body is for the Lord. It's not only, it's not for the world. My body is not for the world. I'm using the gift that God gave me for Him, for His glory. But you're showing it to the world. I'm showing it but it's a gift that God gave me which I'm using for God's purpose, not the world's. Question. Yes, um, well you were saying that you don't consider it a sin and I know uh, I've read the Bible some and that, that it does say that to some it would not be a sin but same time, it says it's just as wrong and a sin to, uh, for that something that you would do that would cause a, a fellow Christian to stumble. And, you know, I know myself and probably uh, many other men, it would cause them to probably lust as they watch to dance. So I, I'm wondering, you know, because the, the Bible does say this and God's Word does say this, you know, how can you possibly, you know, say it's, it's not wrong when you are possibly leading men to stumble and, and to cause lust for your body? You see, now this question about the stumbling block, I've heard before, but to some people the cross is the stumbling block, and yet Christ died on the cross. It is to some the greatest stumbling block because that cross keeps them from God because they refuse to suffer, they refuse to love the cross, so it becomes a stumbling block. But God uses the greatest stumbling blocks to bring salvation to people. That's my answer. You like men, Kelly? I love everyone. Do you like, do you enjoy men's company? No more than women's in particular, because I prefer to see people as creation of God, as a soul, not just in, in sexual connotation. We're going to, we're just out of time really right now. I think there are some more questions out there and there's certainly some more uh, telephone calls, but I, it's, it's very, very interesting and I, I just don't know how I feel about this right now. I think I'm kind of in between. Um, I think we're just... But you're not against me, so that's something. I'm not against you. Oh. I believe that if you think, I think that you are doing with what you were given by God, you're taking what you were given by God, and you're going out and you're doing the best that you can. And, and that's what we all should be doing. That well, I, I'm glad I had the guts to do what I'm doing because at one time I was very timid and I was literally would shake at the thought of just being on a TV show or speaking. Just shake from head to toe. And just that in itself was such a violent effort. It was a great act of love on my part. Kelly, thank you very much. Kelly Thanks. Everts.